Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Compliance Online Live Webinar, FDA Complaint Handling of uh, Out of Trend Results in Pharmaceutical Quality Control. Our speaker for today is Kelly Thomas, has over two decades of CGMP hands-on industry experience in both pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturing operations. So let's start with the definitions of what is an out of trend result. And from here on out, you'll hear it called an OOT. And just make sure you understand that this is a test result that may be within specification. However, this result will show a significant variation from historical results. So your OOT is the comparison of many historical data values versus time. Now, on the other hand, an out-of-spec result, or here going forward, referred to as an OOS, that is very different from an out-of-trend. This is a comparison of one result versus a predetermined specification criteria. Now, predetermined, that means that it lives somewhere official. So these are defined as those results of in-process or finished product testing, which fall outside of specified limits. And these specified limits that are mentioned in compendia, so USPs, it could be in your drug master file or your drug application. Let's talk about regulatory guidance overview now that we understand the definitions between the difference of an out of trend and out of spec result. And there is a very famous court case that occurred in uh, 1998 and it's called the Barr decision. And it very much laid the foundation on the regulatory body's expectations on proper handling of results. So the guiding principles for OOS investigations are based upon a legal ruling by Judge Wooling. And after that ruling, the FDA issued a draft guidance document back in 1998. Now that draft guidance has now become a final guidance that was published in 2006, and we have been using that guidance ever since then. Now, guidances are uh, the way that the FDA communicates with industry so industry can understand the FDA's expectations and how to implement what the Code of Federal Regulations are saying. So guidances are not legal binding. However, it's highly recommended that you follow that train of thought. Let's talk about how to calculate your out of trend results. Very simple uh, mathematical equation. You multiply your standard deviation with three to get the three six sigma value. So then you calculate your maximum trend limit by adding that three six sigma value to the mean. That would be your upper trend limit. And then to get your lower trend limit, you would obviously do the opposite. You would subtract that three sigma value from your mean. Let's talk about the proper steps on how to handle a result when you find it. First and foremost, out of trend result shall be, pre, uh, shall be determined on the basis of data of previous batches or previous analytical data. So just as we said as a definition, this is a result that over time in historical data is shown not to be in line with what you have historically seen through performance. If an out of trend data point is observed, the very first thing the analyst must do is escalate that information. So you need to escalate to the QC lab supervisor or manager immediately. And it is very important that you perform a preliminary investigation quickly, as soon as possible. So let's start with the purpose is, you know, first and foremost, the 
the purpose of the investigation is to determine the cause of the out of spec result. The source of the out of spec result should be identified either as an aberration of the measurement process. So that's just a fancy word for meaning something went wrong. Uh, you might hear it as called an aberrant result. But yeah, so there was like a deviation of the manufacture uh, of the measurement process or there was an aberration in the manufacturing process. So a fancy way for saying a deviation in measurement or a deviation happened in manufacturing. Now, even, and this is a very important point, even if a batch is rejected based on an out-of-spec result, the investigation is necessary and it is still required by GMPs to determine if the result is associated with other batches of the same drug product or other product. The entire point of a purpose of a corrective or preventative action is to identify the actual and the potential product and quality problems. Through that investigation of your quality problems, you want to take appropriate actions to effectively correct and prevent the failure from occurring in the, in the future. Now, the key to a effective CAPA is making sure that you are making sure that your CAPAs are effective from a defined point and that you are not just putting in corrective actions and not reassessing did it actually address your issue. So a correction is an action to eliminate a detected nonconformity. So the correction can be made in conjunction with the corrective action. So for example, rework or regrading. And for example, if a correction is if you have water leaking, then you turn the water off. I call it the first thing that you do. Now, a corrective action is an action to eliminate the cause of a detected nonconformity or other undesirable condition. There can be more than one cause. Just to be clear, there's not always just one thing. And you want to make sure that you are taking action to prevent reoccurrence. Now, a preventative action is an action to eliminate the cause of a potential nonconformity. So as we said in our investigations, as they extend to other batches, this might be a chance to take action before the failure occurs. 